Hey, housemates, you know how I love shiny things. And I especially love an empire of shiny things. Consider unearthing treasures, refining them, displaying them laid out in grandiose cosmopolitan galleries, and hopefully consider seeing these magnificent treasures worn by the royals all over Europe. Sounds wonderful, yeah, but you know, the market on opal mines and diamond cutters is pretty tough. So we'll need to use clever timing and acute prospecting to get on the best deals in the market. Let's build an empire. Wanna play Splendor? Sometimes the theme in a board game seems like an afterthought, or sometimes it can be a little ham-fisted. I absolutely love Splendor because the theme is right there in plain sight, but it doesn't weigh the game down. First, we'll buy these mine cards, which facilitate us getting hold of these artisan and transportation cards. And then we can set up these jewelry shops to attract the noble's attention. It's a perfectly elegant story without leaning on tired thematic concepts. On our turn, we can either collect these gems, which come in these very satisfying tokens, or we can buy a card if we can afford it. The cost of cards appears in the lower left corner of each card. Cards have all sorts of costs, some good deals and some bad deals, so we'll have to be quick and well prepared for the best purchase. Jewels spent buying cards are returned to the supply. Alternatively, on our turn, we can reserve a card. It isn't purchased yet, but we can set it aside, and then only we can buy it later. When we reserve a card, we also collect some gold, which can be used like a wild later in place of any other jewel. It's sort of like collecting an investment towards a future purchase. Once purchased, a card can do one or two things for us. Firstly, in the upper right-hand corner is a gem. That acts like the gems on these tokens, but importantly, we can reuse them over and over through the rest of the game. We've gained a resource to help build our empire. Acquiring a diamond mine you know, makes it easier to open a jewelry shop. And importantly, in the upper left corner on the more expensive cards will be points. Bear in mind, we can only have a maximum of 10 jewel tokens at a time, and the highest scoring cards cost more than that. This means we'll want to collect some low-level cards to get their resources, while planning for those expensive cards to get the points. And what of the nobles we mentioned earlier? Well, there will be several of these members of nobility off to the side. As we buy up cards, we'll gain the attention of the social elite, They'll grant us their prestige and points, making them very valuable. When any one player has collected 15 prestige points, we finish that round and the game ends. Then we dig out our scorecards and see who is the most splendid. The winner will earn this chart of the European family lineage. Ooh, me. Housemates, I'll see you at the game table.